what follows is a manifestation of my interaction and communication with content and a uh, communication that I often have with myself. Um, so I'd like to close this night of music with a, a discussion with myself about myself and I'd like to open that discussion by sharing the following from Keith Rainier, who is the leader of the cult, NXVIM, Nixium, and a sex trafficker. Um, he is currently serving 120 years in prison, a federal penitentiary in Arizona. Ranier pontificated in the video chat exchange that many people who scream abuse do not understand what they're talking about. He suggested that just because standards classify something as abuse does not mean it is abuse. So they abuse abuse, he said. watching this video, chances are you've heard of projection. You've been in that scenario where you're looking at someone who's upset at you thinking, isn't that just the pot calling the kettle black? Pot kettle black. You've been in that scenario where you're looking at someone who's upset at you thinking, isn't that just the pot calling the kettle black? You've been in that scenario where you're looking at someone who's upset at you thinking, isn't, isn't that, that just the pot calling the kettle black? I don't remember that. What is projecting? Displacing in defense. Misattribution of the self. Why is it always back to Freud? Is there anywhere to run on this baking earth from fucking Freud? Projection is another one of his moderately useful ideas buried in his own blinding misogyny. But is projection the blindness of hypocrisy, pot kettle black? Or is it something else regardless? A weak and murky metaphor. Aristotle says, send it back and do better. Next. Or you've been in that situation where someone looks at you and says, you're just projecting. The thing is, most of us don't know the mechanism. No. Isn't that just the pot calling the kettle black? Or you've been in that situation where someone looks at you and says, you're just projecting. The thing is, most of us don't know no. the mechanisms behind projecting. We don't know why we do it or how to stop, which is, of course, why we're having this discussion today. We are born whole. Born whole. But that wholeness is short-lived. It's short-lived because we are born relationally dependent. To be born relationally dependent in a family that is not fully evolved yet because society is not fully evolved yet spells immense trouble. It means that we're about to learn that certain aspects of ourselves are acceptable and certain aspects of ourselves are unacceptable. And this is where the trouble starts. What is acceptable versus unacceptable depends upon the family you're born into. The aspects of us that are seen as unacceptable, both positive and negative, are rejected by our family. 
and the aspects that are seen as acceptable are accepted by our family. So being relationally dependent, in the name of survival, we do anything we can to disown and deny and suppress those aspects of ourselves that are disapproved of and exaggerate those that are approved of. I love the concept of the self that she puts forward, this like very jagged and cliff-hugging, very eroded <laughs> self that builds around all these needs and builds around all of these coasts of acceptability. I prefer the masks. At least you can take those off. But with the coasts, it's forever eroded. We dissociate from what we disapprove of. This creates a split within the person that we call the conscious and the subconscious. The self-preservation instinct is in fact our first act of self-rejection. For example... Okay, here's the first taste of the real like danger that I feel like she's putting forward where you start to disassociate from yourself and you start to see self-preservation techniques as a way of like self-rejecting. And the things you're doing to feel safe are in fact harming you. So I feel that this is, you're keeping yourself uh, safe, but in reality she's saying that you're not. Uh, the way that she says it is as if it's some sort of revelation, as if it's some sort of thing that she's like holding a secret from you and that you're unable to connect to, and so then you eventually find the way to see it. Well, a child is born into a family where anger is not an okay emotion to express. When the child gets angry, they are ashamed for that anger. So the child suppresses and denies their anger for the sake of survival within the household. But the anger does not go away. They just consciously deny it. It becomes subconscious. As an adult, this person will most likely not have any awareness that they have any anger in them at all. They will not and cannot see themselves clearly because they have denied that aspect of themselves. So when people tell them that they are angry, they will not relate to that at all. They may only relate to themselves as easygoing. She says it as if it's a revelation, as if it's meaningful to trot out this tired shit. Feel her start to gaslight your ass like you don't know what the hell is happening. When we deny, suppress, or disown something, it's not like it just disappears. We just lose our conscious awareness of it. We d lose our constant awareness of it. The more she says, the less she says, you know? Associate from the awareness of that thing. Now, in order for us to recognize that thing which we are denying and suppressing, we have to feel the pain of the absence of that particular thing. No wonder self-awareness is so difficult. Oh, no wonder self-awareness is so difficult. Every human in existence that was ever socialized, which is everyone, when... Which is everyone. Murkier and murkier. The more she says, the less she says. I feel myself drift further away from myself with each passing minute. Through this process of splitting themselves into parts. Parts that are owned and parts that are disowned. Back to the map. That jagged terrain. The eroding, because tectonic splitting off into conscious and unconscious islands. This self-rejection is the birth of self-hate. The emptiness that we feel is the result of those missing, rejected, or disowned parts of ourself. And the soul is motivated for one thing. That's to make us whole again. I break for ho especially if she says it twice. We will be provided every single opportunity to become whole again. Oh. But in order to become whole again, we need to see oh. and accept the aspects of ourselves that we disowned. 
This is painful. Oh, shit. This is painful. Oh, this is the painful I've been hearing so much about. Oh, this is painful. Come on. Self-awareness does not come naturally to people who like to avoid pain. Because... <laughs> Are there people that don't like to avoid pain? <laughs> The longer you think about it, the harder it is to answer, actually, <laughs> right? Look at you all here now, right? Subjecting yourselves to me. In order for us to really get to a space of wholeness, what we wholeness. have to do is to stop avoiding the pain. We have to stop avoiding that feeling of void that is inherent within us because of the missing aspects of ourselves. And instead, we need to go straight in the direction of it. Okay, and here we are, right at the gates of depravity. Subject yourself to pain. Oh, sorry. Subject yourself to pain. It's good for you. Right? It's healing. Plug all your holes. And become whole again. You can sit through a little abuse. A lot of abuse, right? What doesn't kill you makes you whole again? Only a few slopes to slip on before I'm reasoning with the rapist in the name of feeling whole again. Hello. Hmm. So we're projection into all of this. We tend to overcompensate for whatever trait we have suppressed or denied or rejected. For example, Abuse. somebody who is super apathetic is going to suppress the aspect of themselves that strives, and someone who strives is most likely going to suppress the aspects of themselves that are apathetic. Wow. <laughs> Am I just disassociating, or are we trudging through garbled muck again? You know, I can't. Now, because the soul is... We oh. should... The soul? <laughs> Where the hell did that shit come from? Diluted pop psych and fucking spiritual Catholic bullshit. God. Version of wholeness. Wholeness. It wants to find a partner it wants that to makes find it a feel more whole. That makes it so the external world whole. becomes the substitute for what we're missing in our internal world. For this very reason, in our partnerships and friendships, we tend to attract both extremes. We attract people into our lives who mirror both extremities within us so that we can have the opportunity to be aware of our own dichotomy. The law of attraction responds to both extremes, law of the overcompensation and the aspect of ourselves that we have suppressed to the extreme. Okay, listen to this fucking woman. Anatomy twist as body geography we are chopped into pieces parts at a distance peppered with gaping holes begging to be filled by versions of ourselves and everything and everyone is just that a version of ourselves is he a part of me We are a match to them, even though they seem to be the opposite of us, because that denied self is still a part of us and is still, therefore, subject to the law of attraction. But our partners, romantic partners specifically, or those that are the very closest to us, tend to be our opposing mirror. Opposing mirror. They reflect the attribute we suppressed, and we reflect the aspect that they suppressed. Okay, this is scary, too, because what about abuse? Ooh, what about abuse? The 
person who is apathetic, therefore, will most likely end up in a relationship with a success freak. What about abuse? Am I my own abuser? Is he a reflection of the part of me I'm unconsciously suppressing that I must confront to become whole? Oh, born whole. Both of them will be caused pain by the other because each is a reminder of the rejected aspect of themselves. Of the they reflect to each other themselves. the lost self. And guess what? We recognize and see in other people the things that we have rejected and denied within ourselves. This is really the essence of projection. When we notice an attribute in someone else that we have made not okay within ourselves long ago, we have the same reaction to that that we did to that aspect within us the first time. Two leading roles to play. Woo boy, that's a lot of responsibility. In one fail swoop, am I abused and abuser, and he's nothing but a hideous mirror, and I drew to myself, and I am drawn to Reject it, avoid it, suppress it, get rid of it. Object. On the flip side, when we see positive aspects in other people that we have suppressed within ourselves, we fall in love. It feels like our opportunity to become more whole. We want more of it. We become addicted to it. We glorify it and put it on a pedestal and even idolize it. This is in fact what's happening when you see crowds of screaming girls at Justin Bieber concerts. They are all projecting the positive aspects that they have disowned in themselves onto him. Oh, come on now. Let those poor girls have Justin Bieber. Come on. Dang. That's some Freudian bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Frightening and weird, isn't it? So many hoops to run through. That's some Occam's razor shit. You know what I mean? You know, easiest uh, possible answer. You know, why bother even going through all of that? It's like, can't those fucking girls be like attracted to like a teenage pop star? Shite. <laughs> it's like a weird way to dismiss feelings of sexuality and desire in women. It's almost like that happens a lot mostly a sense of significance and sexuality, which they, of course, disowned in order to be good, obedient, humble little girls who obeyed their parents. <laughs> the main characteristic of the suppressed or denied self is its complete invisibility to you and its complete visibility to other people. Okay, there's the gaslighting coming in hot. Okay, you can't see anything, you're so crazy, you're so suppressed, you're so repressed, you can't see yourself, but everybody else can, especially me, especially me, everybody else can, everybody else can, especially me, especially me. This is why it must surprise the hell out of you that some people see traits in you that you don't see at all. But guess what? This is how it's supposed to work if you've been suppressing an aspect of yourself. You're not supposed to have any awareness of it. That was the point in the first place. Dissociating from it was your survival technique. Okay, and here again, you know, okay, here and again. An ever-increasing supply of things I'm unaware of and responsible for. Groom me, groom me, groom me, groom me, groom me. So if somebody makes you feel like projection is another personality flaw, you can think again. Because for all of us that have been socialized, this is going to be the outcome. Any extreme aversion to a trait in another person is a reflection of the level of rejection that you develop towards that trait or the potential of that trait within yourself. What? My god, what? I cannot get through that sentence. What? It's like when you look at a name with a bunch of consonants. You just start at the beginning and you end at the end and there's nothing in the middle. The more we love something in someone else, the more we disowned it in ourselves long ago. Now there's a miss- Okay. What twisted weird ass fucking weird view living in a tangled 
mirror of reality. What a weird ass world you living in a tangled mirror of reality. Understanding when it comes to projection. There's an idea that when projection is happening, when someone is projecting something onto somebody else, they're projecting a trait that that other person does not have. But projection is always a two-way street. That means one of two things. Either both people have that very same trait, and the one is just recognizing it in the other, or the very act of being a match to being projected upon is indicative of something that is being reflected in the other person. What the fucking hell? What the hell is she saying? Another <laughs> someone project upon us, we have to be a vibrational match to that experience, meaning that the experience of being projected upon is also reflecting something that is denied within ourselves. On that note, it must be said that projection has become like the single biggest cop-out and deflection technique that has ever been invented, especially in the New Age community. Oh, it drives me nuts when other people saying, you're just projecting. It's a super good way to get out of having to look at yourself clearly or objectively. You're never going to get to a space of self-awareness yeah, if that's what you continue to, to do. You cannot consciously see someone clearly until you are completely conscious of yourself. If you aren't, you will continue to see everyone through the filter of your own subconscious mind. Every time we cop out of looking at ourselves by saying you're just projecting, we miss the opportunity to see ourselves clearly, and we miss the opportunity to see our world and each other clearly. Every single one of us projects. Every single one of us recognizes what we have denied and suppressed and disowned within ourselves in its external reflection. At this point in our evolutionary history, projection is not going to stop completely. What? Again, what the hell? Yo, what's projection? Straight up. What the hell is projection? What's evolution? What the fuck is she heckin' talking about? The why? Not be not projecting. It should be to become completely self-aware. And our extreme negative and extreme positive reactions to others are the perfect opportunity to develop self-awareness. Also, the more we reject something in someone else, the more we perpetuate our own wounding. Because in rejecting or disapproving of that thing in them, we are re-rejecting and re-disapproving of it in ourselves. Again, I find myself subjecting myself to further abuse and suggesting myself I should let fucked up shit fly. It's a projection of my societal suppression. So here we are, how to uncover your self-rejection by using projection to your advantage. Number one, look at the negative traits or aspects about other people that you don't like. Especially look at the traits you don't like about your partner. What bothers you? Step two, discover the positive intention behind the thing that you hate in other people. In other words, what is the real positive intention for the reason that they're doing that super negative thing or possessing that negative trait? Enough negativity. Let's look at the bright side. What are the positives of abuse, right? The answer is, of course, always going to be in line with trying to keep themselves from getting hurt. Three, 
Why was it dangerous, or is it dangerous, for those people to be the opposite of those negative traits? Poor baby. Yes, he's just trying to keep himself from being hurt. It's very dangerous for him. Poor little lamb. It's very dangerous. Yes. Let's see. Step two. Discover the positive intention behind the thing that you hate in other Ooh, people. Yes. In other words, what is the real positive intention for the reason that they're doing that super negative thing or possessing that negative trait? The answer is, of course, always going to be in line with trying to keep themselves from getting hurt. <laughs> Three. Why was it dangerous, or is it dangerous, for those people to be the opposite of those negative traits? Oh yes, why is it dangerous for that person to be the opposite of those negative traits? I would love to heckin' know that. Here we go again with the fucking hoops. Uh, here we go again. I'm so tired, I can hardly... Go on. For example, if I'm lazy, why was it dangerous or not okay to be driven and motivated? Four, recognize that no matter how much you might want to deny it or not admit to it, these aspects that you despise in other people are always a reflection of yourself. Always. These are attributes always. that you have suppressed. Always. These oh, traits are a mirror of what you've projected you in yourself. Suppressed. The more you're trying to protect yourself from yourself, the more the aspects you hate in others will look nothing like you. You will tell yourself, I'm not that way at all. Oh, I'm not that way at all. Step five. Be willing to be vulnerable. In vulnerable. <laughs> be willing to be vulnerable. Be willing to be vulnerable. <laughs> yes, see all it gets you. See all it gets you to that be you are able to open your mind up to the idea that these traits are yours and recognize how it's true that they are yours. Oh yes, my abuse is my own. It belongs to myself. You abusing me is just me abusing myself and I just need to heal in myself and get some hoo-ha crystal bullshit myself. Possibilities here. Either you are very much like those things you hate in others, or those things you hate in others are so buried and so rejected in you that you never do that same thing to a degree that's unhealthy. Six. If you're struggling with this process, involve other people in the process. A good way to know if you've been suppressing or denying something or projecting is if you have heard the same negative thing about yourself from more than one person. Hey, thank God, is a, abuse is a pattern, right? Hey, thank God for that. That will help when you ask for help. Another good idea is to have people that know you well write down the things that they don't like about you, yeah. the negative aspects that they see. And then take special abuse notice of the things that more than one person says. Seven, Abuse just as you did with your partner earlier, or with other people earlier, ask yourself, why was it dangerous to be the opposite of these Not negative abused, traits that I obviously me. possess? For example, why is it not okay for me to be lazy? Right, Eight, begin to find to approval for the things that you dislike in other people and in yourself. Now, this is not the same thing as lying to yourself. You can't say, oh, they're narcissistic, I like that, because it's not true. But there might be some things that come along with being narcissistic that would be really nice, that are actual positives. <gasps> okay, ah, yes, normalizing horrible psychotic traits because of the accompanying rewards readed. Take a cue from a narcissist and be a little violently selfish sometimes, right? 
those are the kinds of things you want to look at so you can release your resistance, not only to other your people, resistance. but more. Ooh, tell me more about releasing my resistance. Especially to the aspect of yourself that you are denying, suppressing, and trying to dissociate from. For example, a person who is cruel may have no problem caring what other people think of them. Don't we all wish we could be that free? No. 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 Nine. Adopt the aspects of Nine. others that you dislike that are in fact <laughs> just mirrors of aspects of yourself that you dislike in a way that benefits you. Uh, BRB, I'm just channeling the unchecked aggression of an abuser. LOL, so fast, because <laughs> see... This doesn't mean become lazy or become cruel. What it means is take time off or quit saying yes to everyone. What is the positive aspect of someone who is lazy? They're not afraid to rest. So mm -hmm. adopting that disowned aspect of yourself could take the form of you taking a rest. This will bring you closer to the state of wholeness. Wholeness, wholeness. What aspects of abuse should I use? To fill my fucking holes. <laughs> you can do this entire process that I've just outlined with positives as well. To do that, you simply need to figure out what you admire, envy, or fall in love with in other people, especially your partner, kids, and idols, and discover the positive intention behind suppressing those things inside yourself. Discover why it was dangerous to have those positive traits. For example, if I'm lazy and I envy people who are driven and motivated, why was it dangerous or not okay to be driven and motivated growing up? Find ways to express those particular traits in your life. So if I'm at a Justin Bieber concert and I love the significance that he has, how do I let myself have more significance? Knowing, of course, that the aspect of me that is suppressed is still an aspect of me. There's a portion in there that is highly significant and that wants that significance to be expressed. What the fuck, yo, fucking god, twisted bullshit crap is that? Fucking Freudian bullshit, Jesus, roundabout ass way to deny your fucking desire and sexuality. Shit, you'll fucking do anything to cut yourself off from yourself, won't you? Shit. Judgment doesn't have to be such a bad thing. And you can't stop judging just by deciding to do it. Has that ever worked for any of you? a survival technique meant to protect you, Jajan. 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 I've never seen it work before. What that means is, instead of worrying ourselves with stopping judging other people, we need to instead develop an open mind that is open enough to take a look at our judgments completely to use our judgments of other people, both positive and negative, to recognize the aspects that we have projected within ourselves. And to protect us from actual danger. Like abuse. It's not all the danger of laziness. Sometimes it's the danger of aggression. Judgment. This causes our judgments to turn into observations. So, what do you judge? Abusers. <laughs> Projection is one of the best tools for self-awareness. It's also one of the best excuses to avoid self-awareness. We cannot be truly authentic as long as we continue to reject, suppress, deny, or disown aspects of ourselves whether they be positive or negative. So if you are willing to be uncomfortable enough 
to see yourself clearly, most especially the aspects of yourself that are missing. I can guarantee you that you are well along the way to authenticity, and you are well along the way to a state of wholeness. Have a good week. Thank you very much. I am cowboy doctor Professor Johnson, and this is my assistant nurse, Average Joe Wokeman. I appreciate your attention, and I would be happy to answer any questions you have about the content you just viewed, as well as anything beyond it, and I'm also available to just simply discuss. Thank you so much for listening and being present. I really appreciate it, and to Sean and everybody who preceded. Take care. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Yeah.